and uh, we're going to kick it off with what worked in the movie for you. I think for um, me, it is it is the presentation. So the the visuals and the sound. The sound is fucking massive. Amazing. They, it's it's not just the cars which they they capture the that rattle and hum and some of the more vicious side of track racing. Mm. It's the close ups that they do, whether it be in the wheel well, whether it be on the fucking the brakes, or on the bonnet of the car. It just it keeps you in the race and it keeps you there. And I think that was part of the uh, the immersiveness of the movie. That's... Also, that that drone, the use of the drone between the cars, and that mm. might have also been like CG, holy CG shots or whatnot. But a lot of it felt practical. Yeah. And like like they were actually doing some of this shit for real on the track, which I, I yeah. really really like too. And um, it, that that's a testament. Like the sound and the the, the way it looks is a testament to to what's his face polyphony. Um, that's that's just what they do, man. I mean, since since the nineties, they've been you know sticking bloody microphones, high high bloody um, high intensity microphones into cars to listen to to what they sound like inside, what they sound like outside. What does it sound like from like you know just in the stands? Like they 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 mm. understand all that audio sort of stuff. So I think that's why our audio presentation was the way that it was. I'm pretty sure that those guys had their hands on it. Yeah. Um, for me, what I enjoyed was the, um, was seeing all the guys from polyphony, mm. like in the film, like they, they weren't just mentioned, they were in there. Right. And these guys, the, the obviously the gamers knew who they, who they were. Yeah. These guys, like it was, it was just, it was next level. Um, for me, the racing as well, the, the execution of the racing was top notch. Um, it yeah. did look like there was a lot of racing in there. Um, it makes me excited to see what Kaczynski does with his IMAX array in um, mm -hmm. that untitled F1, F1 movie that's going to come out. Yeah. Um, um, what's his face? Um, yeah. What's his name? Uh, David Harbour was great. The nice surrogate father sort of um, character. Yeah, um, Legolas was was uh, he, he was trying to be that camp, the camp one, the over the yeah. top. Doctor Doom really was. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What worked for me was like you said, Dave, with David Harbour being like an additional father figure for Young. Mm. But it wasn't like Jaiman was the unloving father as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was still very supportive, but he just, he had a different perspective surrounding like, you know, what he wants Jan to be. Mm. Um, and I think what married it together for Jaiman and Harbour for me was that aspect of tough love that they both had. Yeah. But it was yeah. very much the difference between Jaiman didn't support it, but Harbour did. And I thought that mm -hmm. worked out really well. It didn't take away and make you think that Jaiman was a bad dad. Like mm. they're both great people in his life that really made him just push even further than what he needed to do. Yeah. Mm. I love, yeah. I love that scene. The, the scene between Jaiman and him on the Adam, what's his face at Le Mans. Um, mm. when he says, I should have supported you more. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it, it's weird sort of coming from a father saying that to a son, like I should have supported you more. Like it's almost expected every single time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but him him saying it and seeing his emotion and everything was yeah, it was great. Yeah, a little misty eyed scene. in the theater there. Yeah. Couldn't catch me. <laughs> Couldn't be me crying <laughs> in graduation. <laughs> <laughs> I I loved that scene. I just didn't like where he's like, see that that sticker there. I'm proud of you. Maybe it was yeah, just because it came out of uh, Archie Madekwe's mouth, but I just I, that, I wish I, need, I wish when he sold it completely. His, yeah, when he put his helmet up, like I wish mm. that that he his dad then saw the the what's his face on there, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that would have fucking hit a lot more. Um, but also just on the flip side, when Harbour takes him to the track after he has the accident, mm. after Jan has the accident and he straight away knows you need to get back on the horse. You can't just be hiding and yeah. running from it because he's been in that situation himself. Mm. Mm. And that's where you kind of 
you kind of uh, find out about Harbour's past at Le Mans when, yeah. uh, when something sort of went wrong and there was an accident there that also killed a bystander or, or, yep. or a, a spectator. Yeah, so, but basically like, the incident is like his, his car lifts off <clears throat> at the Nürburgring and hmm. the car flies through the air and obviously there's, there's barriers there but it crashes through the barrier and people are still able to sit and spectate in the Nürburgring. I don't know why. It's the most dangerous track on the planet. They stop racing F1 there because of that reason. Um, yeah. It, it flies and it crushes a, a bystander. And hmm. um, yeah, yeah, Jan is really, really cut up and because he, he, was- murdered, he murdered this person essentially. Yeah. Yeah, and that was it was that was a real event that actually happened too. Yeah, um, but getting Jan to finish that race, mm. I thought, was so impactful to him actually coming back to the sport of racing. Yeah, because they they could have really kind of dragged it out, mm. like in uh, Days of Thunder, where his oh, yeah. rehabilitation and whatnot is it, that like that's that's the biggest part in the movie where there's no racing. Yeah. You know what I mean? There is racing. Sort of character work. Yeah. But they're racing in wheelchairs and whatnot. (laughs) Yeah. And rental rental cars and shit. (laughs) But yeah. Um, Yeah. And I I loved the relationship between, yeah, Jaiman and uh, and Jan. Mm. Because of where, when you parent, sometimes a lot of your guidance comes from fear. Mm. And it's fear mm. of your kids hurting themselves. And you don't want them, obviously, you don't want them to hurt themselves. Mm. Uh, so it comes off the wrong way. And when you kind of get down to the intent, it's I'm scared. So I don't want anything to happen to you because I, I kind of feel that's on me mm. if I support you to do this. So him coming around in the end, that was fucking mad. Mm. Yeah. Anything else uh, that worked for you guys? No. Uh, what didn't work? Kofun. Yeah. <laughs> I would have chosen someone else, man. Hmm. I think the the dude from uh, Midsummer or something like that, if they wanted to go for that, the sort of beige rage sort of character. <laughs> Um, oh, from Midsummer, not yeah. Midsummer. The, he uh, Kofun is from Midsummer. The oh, from yeah. um, what's his face? Hereditary. Hereditary. Nat Wolf. Yeah, Nat him. Whoever that. Yeah, is. yeah. The brother. Yeah, I just think he's the the, the acting acting wise. Like Kofun can can cry and everything, and mm. yeah, he can. I'm calling him Kofun. My de- my dick where can can cry and and everything and. It's just he, he does seem a bit mush mouthed and he does he, he can't can like convey anger properly and all that sort of stuff on the screen and it's just yeah, it gets it gets a, gets a bit much there. And he yeah. he's carrying this film, it's like his film. Um Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, I don't feel he was stoic enough. Especially no. during his arc. I expected that at the start, and then I thought, fuck, this is bad because with him working out, because he, he did look like he was getting leaner and stuff. Physically, yeah. he looked like he was getting more and more in shape as mm. you kind of go on in the journey. Mm. But his attitude didn't change and you didn't sort of see the arc as the much. Growth. He always seemed yeah. clueless by the end of the yeah. movie as he did when he started. Yeah. Whereas when you see the actual, when, when you see the real yarn. Guy's like jacked. Yeah. And he's, but he's, he, he seems like he's got it all together. I haven't seen him speak, so. Mm. Hey, sh- shit is different, you know what I mean? Maybe he's like, bottle of water. <laughs> it's just a race in it, bro. <laughs> it's not looking good, bro. <laughs> just in the middle of a race losing. <laughs> just cuts to what's his face. It's not looking good, bro. <laughs> For me, I feel like they could have fleshed out more of... um. Orlando Bloom's like stakes in this movie. Like I do yeah. understand that um he, you know, he he's at risk of losing his role and things like that if this does go like tits up. But I feel like he didn't have enough Orlando on screen or enough of the stakes present there for him to uh justify his outbursts at some of the moments there. Because when he runs up to the um the station there with Harbour at the end, 
I didn't feel any compulsion for him to do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt like there could have been more to, to flesh that out as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I got a lot of, uh, sort of Harry Osborne vibes. Mm. Let's make some money, Otto, or, or Randy, Randy <laughs> Quaid Price. in, um, Snowball Prize, Otto. <laughs> or Randy Quaid in Days of Thunder. Mm. You know what I mean? Where he's like, he's the money. This is his idea. So he's, he's trying to execute it, but he's not in there with the races. Well, that's they our didn't... engine out there. So why don't you get off your asses and get, help them push? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I didn't like that at the start of this movie, they kind of go, all right, this is your idea. You're the brainchild, uh, Orlando Bloom. But then they turn him into the villain mm. for the second act. But then they, they try to sort of get him in that, in that hero triumvirate there mm. at the end. And I, I just felt like Salter and Marlboro would have been like, fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah. Get out of my spotlight. Cause it does feel like... Um... Even when Jan wins that race, when they're at the uh, the training camp, and he's trying to push for Matthew to to be the face of Gran Turismo or the face of um, you know their team at Nissan, hmm. like I was like, eh. <laughs> like this feels yeah. just very pushed. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, besides the dialogue being a little bit clunky for me, mm. I knew it was going to be like super cheesy. Yeah. Hmm. And it works within the the tone and the the story that they're trying to tell. It's just like fine. I, that's never going to be the one thing that dissuades me from watching a fucking movie. <laughs> I watch cheesy movies all fucking day, son. True. Talk to me about Jackson and Dukes. Chewing <laughs> it out, mate. You mean I got Joe too primed, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, that that wasn't the thing that sort of that killed it for me. What didn't work the most, I feel like that relationship aspect was kind of shoehorned in there because they thought that they needed something like that in mm. the movie to kind of give more motivation to Jan. Um, whereas I think that the strongest thing that, that kind of shines is his own drive to prove his father proud and to sort of, like, you hit the highs, so I want to hit the highs too. Like, this is, mm -hmm. this is the sort of pedigree that I come from, so I want to like sort of put my name up in lights as well. Yeah. Um, whereas like the girlfriend was like a nice touch, but by the end of it, I didn't see him with that chick. God, no. You know, like I, I didn't see him celebrate with her or anything like that. They kind of forgot about that aspect. Yeah. By the end when he's kind of, when he's on the podium. True. Just on um motivation as well. I feel like just being a gamer with that sort of, um, that title above your head, it can be tough to prove yourself as well. Like, because it, like for gamers, it's a gamer thing. Like gamers get it. Like that's your community. And then trying to explain that to people who aren't very gamer versed can be tough as well. Mm. Just explain that it can help you. Like there's been Ted talks about the benefits of gaming as well, compared to regular, regular television mm. and shit like that. Yeah. 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 So I feel like that could have been motivation enough to be like, I'm not just some prick who sits on his ass all day. Like I can do this. Did they, did they explain that well enough in the film for you as a game? Um, I feel like the one big point they had was when he was like, the brakes were glazed. I know this. I've run this a million times. And then he turns out to be right. Like that was, that was a good argument. That was solid. And I yeah. think, like, with Jaiman coming around at the end as well, like, it all... I reckon it does. Okay. Anything else that didn't work for you, Oz? Um, probably the way the game is portrayed. Yeah. Like, they they make make him out to be lazy, but he's got a job. Yeah. He he's just, got a couple jobs, doesn't he? Yeah. He, he obviously has mates as well. Because he's mates with that guy at the the cafe. Um, yeah, a bit funny. They make them out to be like sort of living in their caves and basically trolls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No human interaction, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, other than that, yeah. Who's your favorite character in the movie? David Arbor. Yeah, David Arbor. 100% because I think it's very much like for me it was very much just his 
uh, his arc for this film as well. Because mm. seeing where he's coming from with Kappa to to the end, I thought was really cool for him because he was very hard ass in that training camp. And then once he was speaking to Jan outside of that, it was almost like a smoke show because <laughs> mm. he is very supportive. He was, you know, he was very supportive with Jan after that as well. And I think that was him realizing the potential to. Yeah. And the change in him after like overcoming his fears too. Yeah. Cause they he didn't was... have to give him character growth. Mm. Yeah. Could have just been like one note hard ass the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he was very much comfortable in his job there. Just getting shit on. Also, shout out yeah. to Kretschmann for having another, like, 30-second roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. But then to see him get out of his comfort zone and do that and then become the man he is at the end is great. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say mine's the same as well. David Arbor. Uh, the biggest surprise for me was that they actually made you want to play Gran Turismo after this movie. Mm. It's funny that they they... They make a movie that honors a true story, but also honors the video game. Holy. Like this from the start, like this is Gran Turismo. Mm -hmm. This is how it was made. Like it starts with the game. It actually That's didn't give you the facts about the real O until the end. Mm. And it was very, very quick. It was very, yeah, very Gran Turismo centric. Mm. Especially that, that opening. That opening was beautiful. Yeah, that's fucking bad opening. Yeah, they did well. Yeah. I'm enjoying that we're getting more video game adaptations that are getting a lot more budget behind it and very much like an ode to video games. It's like a love letter. <laughs> mm. Hey, man, I called it. They were going to like make him get that fucking license in this, <laughs> in this movie. I said the biggest laugh on it in the center is like, you need to get your FIA license. I was like, are you fucking for real? <laughs> but Enjoy. how they did it, because I didn't know that like he had to actually qualify at least fourth in a race, in a Ooh. real race. Like it wasn't just him doing fucking like, you know, do a, a three point turn and all that sort of shit, like a driver's license. Like he had to actually earn the stripes in the fucking trenches. I like that. Yeah. yeah same. No, it's also be fucking really boring. <laughs> you know what else was like that and nearly made us pull our fucking hair out? Remember that first mission in Driver? <laughs> oh fuck! We had to qualify that you could be the driver. <laughs> Slower. One <laughs> 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 eighty. Some days I could do it. For some reason, Driver didn't save. Some days I could do it in like a minute and a half. Get it down. Boom, 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 boom. Smash it out. Other days, this is just like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, Driver didn't have fuck all on Stuntman. No. Stuntman was my shit. That was next yeah. month for that game. They need to bring that back. Oh. Yeah. I thought they, were, they, cool. they were doing that with Burnout. Yeah. Or that other one where you got to have to do the tracks but activate the fucking explosions Split and shit. Split second? Like. Yeah! Oh, banger. Evidently not. <laughs> you can still okay. download that shit. Mm. Supposedly a new okay. game out that's like that. Oh, okay. shit. Yeah. Couldn't Ooh. be me downloading Forza Horizon. <laughs> like, <laughs> Microsoft come out with the Forza movie now. <laughs> Fuck it out. Yeah. Bandwagoning bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the tagline is just it takes two to tango, but four's a party. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it out. Star Will on net. <laughs> Get rid of that voice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that line at gunpoint right now? <laughs> well, I. Uh... Uh, all right. That is a wrap. Mm. Unless you guys got anything else to add? What's your biggest surprise of the movie? It being good. It's a game, a game, a game adaptation that, that was great. I think they're, they're really nailing these down now. Yeah. Like Mortal Kombat came out and it was like, wow, this is really, really good. I think the, what Cavill's going to do with, um, with Warhammer is going to be great. Yeah. Um, if he gets a big enough budget around it, um, it, it's going to be great. I think this new Mortal Kombat that's coming out 
especially with the reboot of the game happening right now, is going to be next mm. level. Yep. It's, um, it's a really exciting space. This could be, you know, I mean, look at Mario. Look at what Mario did. Like, I, I think we're, we're, we're in, yeah, I think we're in a good space to see some some good adaptations. I think the the series, the serialization of um, um, Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be good as well. Um, yeah, I, I think we're in a good space right now. I think this could be could take over from from comic book movies. If Ooh. if they do if they do them well enough, it could take over. This could be the thing. True. And we get like a nice little fear effect sort of fucking Ooh. like that. Would what a be fucking next deep up. cut. <laughs> yeah, no. But that I was, was c- that. cinematic already, that game. So you might yeah. as well. Yeah. It was. Mm. Yes, it was. That's a good cast as well. It's legit just like three or four people mm. just doing spy shit. Yeah. And it would be HBO. And it'll be dark and violent. <laughs> and sex. <laughs> that fear effect had some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big strips. <laughs> firing on all cylinders. <laughs> Gotta have the flapjack, though. Mm. Gotta have the flapjack. <laughs> that shit used to fucking sigh. Like, it would sound like a siren when you charged it. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Glass and Deke, man, fucking ultimate. I think Deke was Aussie as well. Either that or English. Yeah. But yeah, you have anything there, Bado? For surprises. Surprise. Um. Honestly, it was the same as Dave's video game adaptation that actually did really fucking well. I think it's because of the director as well. Yeah. To be honest. I think if you get like a really good director that understands games, actually plays games, um, this this sort of works out really, really well. Yeah. Didn't with the King Kong on Xbox, but still. Yeah.